and just showing you one more example of a character, again, starting off as, as uh, sketches on paper um, that we grouped, trying to think about uh, how the character behaved in the game. I mean, I, the, for me, these sketches are really uh, wonderful expressions of ji thought process, and they're, they're, you know, they're so lively. And it was, I think, inspired all of us to try and figure out how we could get the, this kind of richness of personality and, and, and visual language into the game itself. Uh, because, you know, it's one thing to do images on paper, and it's another thing to sort of get into the limited memory size and, you know, limited number of animations and the kind of mechanistic quality of a game often limits you. Um, these, these carnivorous creatures evolved into mega negatics, and then I think these contain the, the final ones. We actually limited it down to three in the end, but these were the five final megatics, including their color palette. Um, so anyway, that's, that's our presentation. <coughs> Ed, do we have more time, or is that uh, that's good? Some questions. Some questions. So could I just like to have the team all come up? All come up. The team <laughs> all come up. All come up. You're wasting our <laughs> Q&A time. So uh, for any of these guys, yeah. So there were a couple other people who weren't on the team. And oh, also before we start questions, I want to thank Audio Brain. Is anyone from Audio Brain here? Audio Brain did all of the the, the music and sound. That uh, Michael Sweet uh, founded that company. Highly recommend them. And also we use the um, Orbital. Uh, framework from Mind Control Software, so also thanks to them. Well, my question was just, a, I just wanted to make sure I understood the actual mechanic. Mm -hmm. So, the, what are you avoiding and what are you... It's a good question. What are the constraints on the line? Right, well, the you, you click on a trap and you draw out and uh, spear a creature. Mm -hmm. At that point, your line becomes energized and you can loop around gunk and get rid of it. That's basically what you're doing. You spear a creature and then loop around gunk. Okay. We didn't show a really basic level. The ones that I showed were a little more active. We've done a lot of play testing and we have a whole tutorial that really steps you through the process. So, it, there, with The tutorial not, explains the game much better than I did, I'm sure. But there's nothing that is threatening the you, line while you're waiting. Nothing threatens the line. But the, the game ends, a level ends because there's a time limit on a level. So if you take too long, then the level ends. And if you have lots of creatures exploding, creating more gunk for you, then also the, the level can end that way. And so to really complete levels in an efficient way, you have to spear groups of them and make the positics, which then give you, know, give you special powers to, to shrink them down and, and reduce the mega negatics and things like that. But the loose condition did, the loose condition, um, sorry. We did um, end up extending it based on what we learned from this, the sort of story mode. In the endless mode, you lose by having too much gunk on the screen. So there's not, there's an implied time, time limit okay. instead of a d discrete time limit in the endless mode. Um, also, I just want to add, I guess, um, one of the things that we did talk about in all the prototyping was, um, as Wade mentioned, sort of constraints on the line itself. But I think what we discovered, um, and it took a while to discover this, is that hindering the player's ability to draw the line sort of ruined what was fun about the game, which was drawing the line. And so, um, and in several of the prototype shots, uh, in those versions, the line could have been limited by any number of things. But at the end of the day, we, we decided that really like that, compromising that would, is really just sort of eliminating like the core really fun part of the game uh, from our point of view. Yes. <laughs> yes, we have had that thought. How involved was Curious in Creative Development? Do you want to talk about that? Um, the process with Curious is actually kind of interesting. Um, we've never worked so closely with another partner that we're, you know, we really trusted their creative input as much as ours. Um, they <laughs> I hope none of our other partners are sitting in the audience. <laughs> no, I mean they were they were they had as much at stake as we did. Um, and they've been they're equally proud of the of the project. They're sort of showing it off to a whole different section of, of the media world than we are. Um, but for the first um, I was the producer on the project and so I did a lot of going back and forth with them. And there for the first part it was there were so many cooks in the kitchen and so many people with great ideas, it was a little bit it was a little bit tricky. 
But um, in the end, I think we ended up coming up with a very compelling cast of characters. And the, the goal of the project from the beginning has been to create um, an intellectual property that's really robust and, and compelling. So the Belinda Blitzville, the Negatix, all of them. So um, Eric showed you Jiyun's sketches. Those sort of went hand in hand with a lot of character writing about what these characters wore, um, a lot of research about spas and about um, these sorts of hippie, therapeutic, alternative types. And Keep talking, I'm just going to say So there was a moment where we had to draw the line in the sand though and say, no more. We have to just move forward. We need to create the game. But there was a longer uh, content process up front than there normally is. But it was great working with them. <laughs> is there not one more question? Maybe about the visual design? So many visual designers. If you don't ask a question, you're just going to be listening yes. to me Hi, instead uh, of watching. How about, how about music? So this is for download. Yes. Is, uh, I, I, the, the little theme in the menu was great. I wish we were getting to see it. Uh, here the um, are you counting on uh, general menu playback on the consumer's computer, or are you embedding the music uh, assets? You want to talk about that, Charles? Um, well, the, the cutscenes themselves are are flash movies and so those um I, I don't know exactly how that works because i don't do flash well i guess where i'm going but with it is, is the possibility of interactive use of the music to, to give the player more urgency is um the, we actually we played a little bit with that and it's there is a, there is a little bit of a, an effect like that in the game um music changes depending on what the line is doing um it's it's so much subtle and um, and I think that's a good thing, um, but yeah, I mean, with, it's there isn't anything very complicated going on. But we we did, you know, Audio Brain was really great to work with, and they had some really good ideas about how to sort of integrate the sound into the gameplay itself. So. Right. Another thing is that the music expresses the characters. So every background music loop is made up out of a melody line and a rhythm track, and the rhythm track is actually tied to one of the guests whose head you're in but then the melody line is randomly selected. So there is actually a lot of subtlety going on with the sound. Uh-huh. How the game? 17, 18? I think right now it's, it's a little bigger than it will eventually be. I think it's about 20, but it will shrink a little bit. Right, we used to be that 10 megs was the kind of glass ceiling for size, and we've seen that go up to about 20 or even 30 megs for a downloadable game. But I think you were shooting for something less than 20. Yeah. It was really important. The, I mean, the, the, the question about Curious, it was really, really important to have high quality intro and high quality cutscenes because their bread and butter is obviously more animated things. So. Those where we got to show off the art, that in the dictionary, which Eric showed you. All right, thank you very much.